not near mint. Says he likes my style. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Since the beginning of all comic books, creators have been mistreated. As for better pay, only to be told. No! 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 no. Then, something happened that brought all media together. The internet brings comic fans around the world into one comic community. We support the just pay and recognition of these comic creators, comic fam. Because comics are for everyone. It's 10 p.m. Eastern, live from the United States to Australia. This is the Not Near Mint Show. A weekly YouTube show about comic books. Welcome to Not Near Mint, everybody. It is November the 10th, 2021. It's New Comic Book Wednesday and the 117th episode of this show. Tonight we have a very special guest. Uh, his name is Jeremiah Espinoza. The name of the book is... Uh, I can't find anything. Hallowed North. So we're going to be speaking to him today, and why don't we bring everybody in? We're joined by Wack. We're joined by Ree. We're joined by Miracle Man Comics on the Mind. Hello, everybody. What's up, everybody? Hello. 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 Thank you for joining us tonight, Jeremiah. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for, for having me on. So we just noticed that you more than surpassed your goal today. As of 10.06 p.m., you are at $1,728 out of a goal of $1,200 raised. Congratulations. How does it feel to be funded? Oh, uh, thank you so much. It's, it's incredible. To, um, we actually hit funding in eight hours. And the, the night before we went live, the night before we went live, I prepared myself for every potential outcome that was possible, with the exception of being funded in one day. Like that was the only one that I wasn't ready for. And so I was pretty overwhelmed whenever it happened, for sure. Wow. Uh, so what were your inspirations to do a, a comic book that was rooted in mental illness and uh, how did that take shape? Um, so I've dealt with mental illness my entire life. Uh, ever since I was a kid, I think the first time that I saw a therapist, I was, I want to say eight or nine. Um, when I was an adult though, um, I had the worst depressive episode of my life and it got pretty it got pretty difficult. Um, got pretty difficult to to get through things, and and it was tough to kind of convey to my family how I was feeling. Um, you know, I say that if you fall down and break your arm, you know, you have proof of with an X ray, you have swelling uh, wherever it happened. Uh, if you catch a cold, you have a cough. But when you're depressed or when when you're dealing with another mental illness, you don't really have a whole lot of proof or, or, or receipts for, for what you're going through. And so I wanted to express, I wanted to find a way to express it to my family to show them how it was, how it was happening. And at first it was going to be a book. At first it was going to be a prose novel. Um, but given the uh, imagery that I was looking for creating uh, in the book, it translated so much better uh, to, to a comic. And I think I'm pretty sure I made the right choice with that. Yeah, I'd say, uh, considering that most of the comic book community that I know aren't exactly happy, fun people that live totally normal <laughs> lives, we all have some kind of void to fill. I mean, kind of look around me here. Uh, I had a post on Twitter earlier this week where I was talking about my experiences and Honestly, I think we wind up having a lot of people in the community that have these experiences and we we want to show that you know 
out there, you're not alone if you feel that way similar. And I'm glad that we have a comic book like yours out on the market now that will make people feel like they're not alone as well. Yeah, and that's, that's the hope. Whenever I tell people about Howl of the North, whenever I pitch it to them, one of the more frequent things that I hear is, uh, this is this sounds exactly like what I'm going through right now, or yeah, that's that's how it feels. And it for one, I'm really appreciative that people are willing to share that with me because it's still it's still even now it's still difficult to discuss mental illness and it's still kind of shied away from in a lot of spaces. So when people are willing to open up to it, especially whenever it's because they connect to a project that has been so personal to me uh, for several years now, um, yeah, it's it's just it's unreal. And I'm glad that it's helping uh, or that I'm, I'm glad that it has the potential to help. So a little taste of the book. Why don't you tell the audience uh, what it's about and where you're planning on going? Because this is just going to be the first issue of a series that you're planning on doing what, six issues? Yes, six issues. Um, so the book is about, uh, the book follows mental constructs known as vapors. These are uh, representations of people that our main character has met throughout his life. Uh, the entire thing takes place within the mind of somebody going through one of the, uh, uh, going through a depressive episode. And these vapors kind of live together. This is a community. Um, they, most of them know what they are. Some of them don't. In fact, we follow, uh, we follow a vapor that is just recently created um, as a kind of a way to introduce uh, and introduce the readers to the concept. Um, and learning about that is a part of the process. Learning that this is what their reality is, is a part of the process. Um, but as our main character slips into, uh, sleeps, slips deeper into depression, a uh, monster appears in Hallowed North and threatens to destroy everything around it. Um, and, um, everything that Ben loves that Ben, our main character, I should have mentioned that. Um, so the first issue introduces us to the concepts of Hallowed North and uh, four of the five main characters. Um, it's um, ultimately the book is a story about hope, but we need to get further and further into the darkness first. Um, I pitch Hallowed North as the mind's last stand against unrelenting darkness. And so it does get, um, it does get into the thick of it at times. Um, and that, and that's kind of where we're going in these first couple of issues. We're seeing things pr uh, get progressively worse and we're seeing the monster get more and more powerful uh, with each of his appearances. And to the right here on the screen, the audience, uh, for those listening to the podcast, uh, we're looking at some of the imagery from artist Jay Shake. Am I pronouncing it right? Is it Sheik? Shake? Sheik. It's Sheik. Hmm. So how did you find the artist and how did you wind up uh, working on your process on this book? Um, Hallowed North is the first um, big comic project that I've, that I've done. I've done, I, I did one anthology prior to this. It was a short eight page, uh, short eight page comic. Um, but I kind of entered into this without a whole lot of connections. So I stalked, um, the few people that I knew, I stalked their Twitter pages and looked at who they were following and things like, and, and, and stuff like that. And I came across Jay's uh, profile, looked at his portfolio and was blown away by uh, his style. And it, and I thought that it just meshed perfectly with um, what I wanted to do with the book. Um, I thought, I thought that he really, um, he really captured the feeling that I was going for, um, which he has. Um, if uh, you know, we have the we have the pages up, I, I think that he's done some really great work so far. Um, so I reached out to him, hoping that he would say yes, and I was very grateful that he took took on the project. And yeah, at first we started um, just doing a couple of commissions here or there, uh, a pinup, um, uh, just little pieces. And um, whenever. Whenever I first reached out to him, the plan was to just do a handful of pages and then we would fund for the whole first issue. Um, but I think a, a couple a couple of months prior to our initial planned launch, I reached out to him and I said, no, I think we're going to go ahead and do the whole first issue and then we'll just fund for printing, which is where we're at now, which helped us set the goal a little bit lower and make it a little bit more attainable. 
Nice. And now that you wind up having uh, $1,800 done out of this, are you already on work on issue two now? Uh, we're going to get started on issue two. Yeah, uh, that's that's one of the things. Uh, the, that's one of the things that we're going to get started. The plan is um, to start funding for issue two uh, for for the printing of issue two. I guess it depends on how well issue one issue one does, but um, we'll start funding for the for the production of issue two around the time that we start delivering issue one. So. What were your experiences like growing up? Uh, did you uh, wind up being a comic book fan yourself as a kid growing up? So whenever I was really young, I was definitely a hundred percent nerd. Um, but comic books were one of those things that I didn't really get into, and I felt like I really I needed to because I, I checked off all the other boxes. I played video games, I watched Power Rangers, you know, <laughs> I did every, I, I did all that. I even enjoyed like the X Men animated show and stuff like that. But reading comic books themselves, it just I don't know. There wasn't really a there wasn't really a, a, a connection there. However, um, as I got older, I really started to appreciate the the art form, and I really started to appreciate the stories that you could find in comic books. And I think that um, entering into my uh, early twenties, whenever I started reading Scott Snyder's Batman run, is whenever I really saw what you could do with the medium. Even taking an existing character like like Batman and and introducing some new concepts to it, and blew me away. And then I went back and I read you know tons of you know I, I read tons of these. Uh, you know, iconic series. And I just fell in love with the, with the genre at that point. I knew that I wanted to, to write some of my own one day. Nope. That actually begs a really great question now. Uh, so do you have a dream Marvel or DC character or project? And you don't have to tell us any details, but do you have something on your mind for any of the big two? Yeah, absolutely. I would love to write a bat family uh, arc one day. So we might be seeing you on uh, Future State with some Rush really covers. covers. That would be great. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> so uh, what was your process uh, working on this book? Uh, when you started getting pages in from Jay Sheik, uh, what was that like? And did, it t did you have to tailor your writing at all? So before I... Before I uh, started like writing the the bulk of the script, I reached out to Jay and I said, "Hey, how do you best how do, how do you best like receiving your scripts?" Because from what I've started learning is there isn't really a, a big industry standard whenever it comes to the formatting and how and how everything looks. Um, but I, I got feedback from him and he was very uh, open to just about anything as long as it was legible. Um, I trust. Uh, I trust the artist to know better than than me what makes a page look good. Like I, I trust that they that they've got the training and they and they've got the the years of experience to to understand it. Um, so the script writing is pretty bare bones as far as descriptions, as far as um, page layout and things like that. I put what needs to be in the script for the story to for for the story to tell to be told properly, and then I leave the rest up to him. Um, and uh so so that opens up a lot of freedom for jay and he and he's done a really good job about uh, a, good, a good job adapting it and adding to it and elevating the material so uh, who were your heroes when you were uh, growing up reading comics uh, different artists different writers how did they inspire you on books like today um well probably one of my biggest influences uh right my, my biggest influence as a writer is stephen king um i love i love the way that he's able to take um you know these real life real life concepts and and just twist them and 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 make them uh absolutely horrific um i love how you know he takes a, a concept like alcoholism something that, that you know so many people struggle with and and is able to create one of the most influential horror books of all time out of it love how he's able to take uh uh you know um his own history with uh, you know the moment that his son almost almost got uh, almost got uh killed from an 18 wheeler and he turns that into a book that he says was the most haunting book that he'd ever written and whenever he was finished with pet cemetery he put it away in a drawer and didn't look at it for i can't remember how long he said 
but you know building on the horrors of reality he's he's an expert at that and i hope that i get slightly close in that direction with with my writing well, even Stephen King way back from the beginning when he was trying to break into being a writer, I, I remember the stories being that he would try and send his book out to all the different publishers until one day he just started throwing all the rejection letters without even opening them into the trash until one day his wife went, hey, hey, Stephen, come here, you idiot. Look at this. This isn't a rejection letter. They want your book. <laughs> So as long as you keep trying, you keep trying, uh, most comic books are going to be at least good. And just to give them a try, there's so many of them out there. This is why we do a show like this. And when we have a subject like this, it's something that you don't really see very often in comics, especially when they say the closest that we can really get to any kind of mental illness is perhaps, I don't know, Peter Parker throwing out stupid little quips because he feels a little bit of anxiety. I think that was the doorway in, but within these last couple of years, we've seen a more progressive attitude as uh, mental health has been more embraced around the country as something that is okay to talk about now. Um, I, have a, I have a quick question. Sorry to jump in in the middle here. Yeah. I'm, just try, I'm just trying to back it because uh, Ace made a, a promise, a nice promise here. Uh, for someone that com uh, backs a complete tier. And I was trying to do that. And when it goes to select a country, there's only not my country. <laughs> <laughs> so Canada, Mexico, and the United States, and there's no Australia, and that makes me sad. I can't... I can't... We have two Australians on the show right now. Well, I'm very sorry for it. No offense was intended with the... Offense taken. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> <a book. laughs> with with the kickstarter um this being my first one i was a little nervous about biting off more than i could chew and i didn't want to jump into the deep end and and potentially offer you know tiers that or or, or shipping to countries that i'd have difficulty fulfilling but uh, if you're interested, I will absolutely look into what the shipping rates would be like to Australia, and I'll add that to 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 the rewards. That'd be great. Um, <laughs> I would I would for one appreciate that as an Australian that's trying well, to buy a book. Do Australians even suffer from depression? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that we're not real. So yeah, I'm still trying that. to come to grips with that. To be fair, we, we just fade away from the screen. <laughs> to be fair, any country filled with koala bears uh, should be the happiest place on earth. I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah, I mean, sure. you know. That's I heard koalas are not that bright, even though they're cute as hell. I, I've also heard they'll rip your arms off and beat you half to death with them. So tell me. Uh, <laughs> if you, uh, we did right. say this show goes off the rails. It does happen. Welcome. Uh, so I'm gonna. Ace said that I can buy them the complete set, uh, tier set instead. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Woo! There you oh, go. Oh yeah. It it is a penal colony. It is a penal colony. Um, do you have so, to say penal? It's very penal there. Um, <laughs> if you you know as a as I, I heard you say you know you had a Batman family story. Um, if you, you know, if you had a pick right now, uh, gun to the head, uh, being dangled over a cliff by one foot by Arnold Schwarzenegger, have to give the right answer <laughs> type of question, uh, DC or Marvel? Um, at this point, I'd, I'd probably say DC, but oh, uh, good, you stay, be... you get to stay that you get to stay on the show, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but go ahead, please finish your answer. Uh, but at <laughs> but at the moment, the one downside to the one downside to being so involved in in you know getting this Kickstarter going and trying to stay ahead with the with the number of scripts that I've been writing is that I haven't done any uh, recent reading. I buy, I go to the stores and I buy and I buy every week, but um, haven't gotten a whole got, haven't gotten a whole lot of uh, reading done in the last few months. So the stack is growing. I can I can relate to that. I uh, I'm familiar. <laughs> Yeah, we have no idea what you're talking about. Stacks on stacks on. Back there is the reading pile. Right back here is some new back issues, and this is just this week alone. 
yeah, we kind of all fall behind around here. It happens. It happens. That that was a good answer, though. I'll be honest with you. I've always been a DC guy myself. I don't get these Marvel zombies. Uh, I just don't understand it. Actually, I like Marvel zombies. But other than that, I don't get the Marvel thing. It's cool. Everybody's got personal preferences. Uh, one other question for you, though. Um, who do you think would win in an arm wrestling contest between Donnie Cates and Stan Lee? In their prime. Both of them in their prime. In their prime. In their Stan prime. Lee. Stan Lee, really? No. Stan Lee in his prime. Man. You know, gonna, you're going to go to a con, and Donnie's going to come up and just kick you in to the chair. To, <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, I haven't seen Donnie Cates in anything other than a long sleeve shirt or a jacket. True. Um, I, so saw I don't know what. I, I, I don't know how it's going. Right. I, I, <laughs> you saw that one, right? <laughs> no, I hadn't seen that yet. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Halloween. He was, he was in a dress. Halloween costume. Yeah, him and the misses did a swap. They look cute. Oh, I don't lie. They look cute. Um, uh, great. Uh, you know, I'll be honest with you. I, Rob likes to ask all these boring questions. I ask the important ones. I don't know if you could tell, um, but uh, definitely the most important questions. Uh, Rob, what else have we got tonight to ask Jeremiah? Because my questions are, are really dumb, and we should oh, get you, some you can continue asking dumb questions, but you know what? <laughs> There was a promo video that y'all made for Hallowed North, and we have it right here, ready and loaded to go. It's, uh, it's okay to play it for the audience. Jesus. Yeah, of course. All we right, should, we should we definitely see this video. We should definitely see this video. Three, two, one. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, Hallowed North, the trailer. That that is the most exciting promo video for a Kickstarter. I think I've ever like I I never wanted it to end. <laughs> Real, I mean, wow, I appreciate that. that. If you could make a three and a half hour movie and call it the Jeremiah Cut, I'd really appreciate it if you could do that. <laughs> Mostly going to be slow mos though. It's be okay, sixty like percent slow mo runtime. Right. Okay, can you do it? In, can you do it even more black and white? Like, could you do it in black and white and then put a black and white filter on top of it? And I'll make it happen. All right, sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> I, I, I do have a real question I need to ask because, you know, like, th like literally, so we have a great little community of of YouTubers and and podcasters, uh, and Eva Webb, uh, hands down the most talented person in our entire uh, ecosphere. Uh, Rhea and Eva. I were just, just talking about her. She's phenomenal, um, and she she gave me a real grown up question to ask you. So, who are your creative influences? Okay, uh, creative influences yeah. of so I feel like uh, one of my creative influences would definitely be uh, Stephen King, uh, sure. Scott Snyder, as mentioned before. Of yeah. uh, a tough question. Um, whenever I Whenever I attempt to, whenever I attempt to write something new, um, I I try to tackle it strictly from my own internal voice, um, and because if I don't, it's it's usually going to fail. It's going to fall by the wayside. Um, I guess in the scale of what I'm working on right now, at least, uh, Hallowed North was designed with uh, with the scope of something like Lord of the Rings in mind, at least. You know, uh, the fellowship going out and stopping this, you know, this evil, this uh, this evil threat, uh, threatening presence. Um, whenever I began writing it, it wasn't intended to be a horror story, but I think just because of how much this subject affects me, I, I, that horror kind of came out on its own naturally. Um, but as far as the the themes, as far as what um, 
what we'd like to see. And I'm not saying that the characters are going to get like swords and, and, and axes and stuff, even though I guess that would be cool, but right, it yeah. is kind of, it is kind of in the same vein of this, uh, this overwhelming presence that, um, that seems unstoppable. That's, that, that's increasingly becoming more powerful. And, and the, this group of people who just have to try to persevere no matter what. Hmm. I uh, listen. I'll tell you what. Uh, ev the one thing every comic story could use more of is battle axes and swords. Um, you know, uh, from from Batman uh, to Saga uh, to Walking Dead, everybody needs swords and battle axes. Um, well, we're early so, in the series. Maybe series, there's a way to make it work. Okay, <laughs> wiggle it in there. Wiggle it in there. So yeah, yeah that B cover is phenomenal. Nothing against uh, my wife. The other one, but that's great. Oh, that C is great too. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got a nice Heather, black and white. Yeah, the uh, <laughs> fan, but that one is clean. Yeah, you're just gonna have to get all of them. I'm so sorry. Oh, what, yeah. are you, what are you saying? Like I just did for eights. Yeah. That's so, right. uh, hell yeah. I have had, I've had the privilege to work with two very talented artists on this book so far. Um, Jay, whenever he sent me the cover design, um, he he sends he sends me like the 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 pencils and the and the inks just to give me like a just to give me like the a pass through before he progresses further. Um, and usually it's just a hey, fucking killing it again. Um, but whenever he sent me the pencils for for the cover, I looked at it and I'm like I, I thought. Wow, this needs to be a variant. This needs to be something else, uh, something that we offer because it's absolutely beautiful. Um, it's very unique, and while it doesn't, while I don't think that it should be the primary cover, I think that people would like to see this art. And what he did was took it and uh, filled it out a little more, gave it a little bit more detail because it really was just a rough sketch. Whenever he first sent it over to me, and he created that awesome cover, uh, Heather Vaughn, I came across her page. I think somebody shared one of her posts or something like that on, on portfolio day. And as soon as I saw her work, I knew that I needed to work with, I needed to work with her at some point. It was, it, it became a bucket list item. And I reached out to her whenever I was looking for a, another variant cover. Um, she accepted. And after, after producing that beautiful cover, yeah, it, it's, it's a bucket list item to continue working with her. That's awesome. That's fantastic. You know, now that you, you've spoken so highly of some creators, I have to ask you another question. Uh, if you had to fight any <laughs> comic creator, <laughs> alive or dead, <laughs> are you people. setting up like a listen, arena? <laughs> listen, I'm, I'm writing my own comic, and I need this for, for <laughs> research purposes. Research purposes. If you could fight any <laughs> any comic creator, alive or dead, you had to. You have no choice. You have. To. I know no comic creator would want to fight any other. Uh, which one would you most want to fight? Alan Moore, <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. he would use magic, and you, you would have literally to learn how to use yeah. magic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> made of wood. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I'd probably get my ass kicked, but, <laughs> he, but he's, he's got that long reach, man. He's got. As, I've, I've as, seen pictures. His arms are long. <laughs> as great, as great as as the the works that he's done are. Um, sometimes he just seems like a bummer. Just seems like a buzzkill <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. I don't want to watch movies made out of things that I've written. <clears throat> Shut up and just try it. It's just an entertaining experience. Yeah, I remember he complained about he complained about comics becoming too serious. That that there were these uh, that there were these uh, that this was supposed to be a medium for like uh, working class and like lowbrow and stuff like that. But yes. I remember whenever I read that, I was thinking, you know, he's one of the people who did that. <laughs> You know? yes. He wrote Twilight of the Gods that was freaking dismissed entirely by DC because it was too dark. Alan Moore, and then they did it anyway. Another All right, listen, this is a lot of Alan Moore bashing, and I, I'll be, I'll take it from the guest. Hey, I the love Alan you, Moore. Please you don't shut your goddamn hey, mouth. Hey, hey, his, I said he's done some really great work. <laughs> uh, you just, you just literally wanted to fight him. Uh, that's fair. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Uh, I'd fight Stan Lee, but you know, that's just me. 
Um, like dead Stanley? No, no. Like fight him in his prime. Like get me the best <laughs> version of Stanley. Miracle. Miracle Man only picks spots oh, he can win with dead people. Right. That sounds <laughs> right. That's fair. Uh, Newsflash. Miracle Man picks a fight with corpse. News at 11. <laughs> so so can I ask, Jeremiah, you know, as we all know, we've done a lot of interviews with uh, people doing Kickstarters. And, you know, we know this is the fast track to, you know, retiring early uh, and living that sweet life. Uh, I'm sure you've already checked out your first yacht and helicopter. Mm-hmm. What, what, too. what day job are you looking forward to quitting uh, to make comics full time? So I feel like this is a cliche to answer, but I work in IT. Um, All right. Classic. I work, yeah. 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 <laughs> I work in IT, and it's it's a great job. I mean, it's it's a it's a great organization to work for. Nerd. Um, <laughs> leaves leaves IT. plenty of free time to write comics. <laughs> Very cool. Um, um, funny you mentioned that, though. Uh, my daughter, I have a nine-year-old daughter, um, and she, we went into one of we went into a local comic book store, and she noticed that they had some of my prints there um, promoting the book. She saw it, and I think whenever we left, the first words out of her mouth were, "So, Dad, are you rich now?" And I told her, "No, I'm way more broke than we were before." I think that you know, you might not go to college, kid. Yeah. How bad do you need to go to law school? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, you know, because at that when you're starting you out, it's, you're, it, it's more like a hobby that you're just hoping not to lose money on, right? I mean, that's really kind of how it starts in the comics in the comics biz, right? But basically, so. Yeah, that's a that hopefully hopefully you get that Batman family story, you know, and uh, uh, it gets turned into a movie and you get your name put at the end and maybe a five hundred dollar check for appearing. Um, five hundred dollars, <laughs> that's a lot of money. Appearing, that's what the SAG would give him. He would get nothing for the comic, it's but the SAG though. would give him. Uh, <laughs> hey, we'll pay you in exposure. <laughs> yeah, that happens. Um, so you know, uh, plans plans for the future. What have you got? What do you got? What's kicking around in the back of your head for? Because I'm sure you're like eight projects ahead right now, right? Like you're not even thinking about this one. You're like forgot about the Kickstarter and you're planning out the next eight or nine. It is so hard to fight that to fight that urge. It really is. Um, yeah. But what I'm doing right now, and I act, I asked, actually asked Jay about this because Jay is constantly juggling projects, and he's a, he's a writer himself as well. Um, he uh, he told me, you know, you whenever you're dealing with something that has to take the forefront, you know, you just write down what you can leave breadcrumbs to kind of follow back to that idea whenever you have the time to do it. Um, because I want to get hollowed North finished. I want to get that taken care of. I want to get it all out of the way, but, um, but yeah, there's, uh, I want to do a legitimate horror story. I, I struggle still with calling hollowed North a horror, horror book sometimes, even though, um, by, by looking at just a few of the pages of art, you know, it really is. Um, but I want to do, you know, full on horror. I would like to, to, uh, to dive into some sci-fi and I have ideas for both of those. Um, Ooh, yeah. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully we're able to get through all of Hallowed North. Um, hopefully we, we have the kind of success that we're seeing so far with the first uh, Kickstarter and um, hopefully we're able to move on from there. And have you gotten a chance to uh, talk to any of the other studios out there like Vault or Boom about any other potential projects in the future? Uh, not yet. Uh, this is, I'm not going to name the, I'm not going to name the publisher, no names. but <laughs> Hallowed North, um, I pitched it to a publisher a couple of years ago and they were actually um, interested in doing it, but it was, it was it was a smaller publisher, none of none of the ones that you named. Um, but the experience was kind of souring, and luckily I was able to. I didn't sign anything. I didn't I didn't progress far enough into those conversations. Um, but I think what I want to do is just get a few um, independent titles under my belt before I try to, you know, branch out a little further. I mean, if, if, any, if anybody if anybody hears this and wants to hire me, then by all means, you know, email me. I'll hire <laughs> I mean, you. I, I, want to hire you. I just don't have the funds to do I'll, it. I'll hire you. 
But we've also been hearing all these stories from certain particular uh, independent comic book companies that will acquire somebody's property and then just leave it in the storage house. Yeah, it's awful. It's absolutely awful. So when you have it all on your own while you're taking a bit more risk, I don't know, perhaps there might be a lot more reward there in the end. I mean, we have somebody like uh, Kwanzaa Osijefo that's been putting out black, now white. And initially, he, he was on the show a few months back, and he was putting out a book on his own, on the street on uh, in California. Come up, buy the book. And now that same book is going for about $200. Uh, the new white series, 2000 print run. And it's just, we're seeing people now that have been doing Kickstarters that are now becoming larger, more well-known, and we want to make sure that these people get out there and known by the community. Uh, that's, I mean, uh, as somebody who's doing that, that's really appreciated. All right. Well, you know what? We're we're coming up at about uh, 45 minutes here, so I just wanted to give you an opportunity, uh, Jeremiah, to tell everybody your uh, your socials and stuff. I think we're probably going to get ourselves over to a little comic book therapy here. Oh, yeah. Uh, and you're more than like, as we were saying backstage, you're more than welcome to hang out and show comics if you picked any up or, or take off if you need to go off and make some more comics. All right. So uh, you can follow me at J-A-Y-N Espinosa, J-A-N Espinosa uh, on Twitter. Instagram, uh, Twitter. You can follow Hallowed North on Twitter as well. Um, head to the Kickstarter, hallowednorth.com. Uh, contribute if you can. Uh, if not, and you and you still want to see the project uh, succeed, share the link. Every every little bit is appreciated right now. Um, yeah, thank y'all so much uh, for for joining uh, for for allowing me to join. <laughs> Oh, there's you, no allowance necessary. Whenever you have another book, we want you to check in, uh, get the word out, and get pe get you funded and get overfunded and get you on to the next project. Yeah, and if you want to back so the much. book and you live in a country outside of the countries <laughs> that are in there, just, just back me. it anyway and send it to someone else like I did. Send it to me. I want yeah. 20 copies by the end of the show. I just want to say thank you for writing something like this. It's important. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so very much. Yeah, as a as a as a group of comic fans, all of which suffer from mental health issues. Um, if you couldn't tell, <laughs> recovering alcoholic and chronic depression, right here. Right. Woo! Right. Um, I mean, you didn't have to out yourself for what you had, Rob. But that's yeah, my last uh, name is Worth. My I name is Rob. Is <laughs> from what John Oliver once said, that uh, if you look like a bird, lean into it. And me, I have the last name of Worst. Fuck it, not near mint. That was literally the most John Oliver like accent I've ever heard. Um, if it, so, but as I was saying, as a group of, of comic fans, all of which have uh, mental health issues, uh, it is great to see uh, somebody addressing it uh, and working on it. And I hope you uh, have a lot of luck with it and, you know, any projects you do in the future. All right. Thank you all so much. Absolutely. Would you like to hang out with us while we show off some comics, Jeremiah? Uh, actually, I do think I, I, I do think I'm gonna have to run, unfortunately. Okay, that Go IT ahead. that IT life calling. Keep it running right. and get some good night's rest. Congratulations so on much. making that goal. <laughs> really Thank appreciate you, it. Thank y'all. Have a great night. Good night. See ya. All right. So, who is ready for some comic book therapy? Did y'all pick up some books tonight? I've only got two to show. If you want me to start. Oh, oh we yeah. would love to see you at a comic book therapy. <laughs> I've so got, here we oh, go. Goodness. Three. What is two, Lee doing? I like this. Whatever. <laughs> one. No, it's not. Uh, oh, there we go. So, what exactly is the problem? Tell Dr. Worst. That swole black cat. I see her in my dreams. It is okay. Swole black cat cannot hurt you. But what if I want her to hurt me? What? What? I love it. <laughs> so what'd you pick up? <coughs> Valiant. Thanks, Valiant. They sent us a huge box of um, stuff. And one of them was the first issue of Shadow Man, which I really enjoyed from Cullen. Who they sent me stuff? Yeah, man. Um, so How Greg get, Katzman. I didn't realize people got sent stuff in Australia. How'd that happen? Um, well... They sent it to the Americans, and the Americans sent it to me. 
So, oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. And I also got this really nice um, Harbinger hard cover with the slip, which I really like. Oh, and yeah. here's the best part about this whole story now, we were just talking about there is, I feel like I should give a trigger warning to people that haven't read it. There is a sexual assault trigger warning in the like initial arc. It's, I don't know if I can recommend it because of that, but there is some really good stuff around Toyo Harada's origins and that stuff I really enjoyed in particular, which I'm trying to find art for. Here we go. How's that? Can you see that? So, like, that shit, fire. That's a happy-ass baby. <laughs> <laughs> was. Was, that, was that Toyo Harada after the, the nuking of... Hiroshima? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I would recommend reading the Toyo Harada standalones. I don't know if I could recommend Harbinger unless you can handle that kind of content. And that's me. Be <laughs> honest, we appreciate it. No worries. So who's next? Who's next? I'll go next. Okay. Uh, should I play your bumper or are we uh, retiring that? I mean, listen, I don't care. Dude, you do what you fucking want. You do what you fucking want. You're up worst. You do what you want. So the fun of Miracle Man. What Alan Moore did that was so brilliant, Michael Moran has grown up. And he's in his 40s. He's overweight. He's sad. There's something that he can't remember. The beauty of Miracle Man is he's got a voice like sliced butter. So, um, I How got to... dare you. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, we, I did not pick up books today, actually. But I did get a bunch of books in it. So, we're going to show those off right fast. I actually had a exclusive cover for uh chilling adventures and sorcery come in unfortunately it was damaged it was actually it wasn't damaged it was not supposed to be shipped it looks like it was bad uh before they shipped it to me and they missed it but um it's uh from va comic con um they do a ton of exclusive covers it was a dan Par parent exclusive cover luckily not I cheap was, not cheap Luckily, the guy was fantastic about it, immediately apologized, offered me a replacement or a refund, whatever I wanted, offered to pay for my – to give me a full refund, shipping included, was fantastic. If you ever, 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 ever question whether or not to order a book from VA Comic Con, uh, I am personally going to give you a guarantee that I believe they will absolutely take care of you. They, they hopped right on it for me. Um, now let's talk about some books. I'm sorry, Michael. Here we got Comrade <laughs> Kill, a little uh, funky graphic – OGN that came out from, huh. uh, I think this was Ad House or Comics Mix. That from the 70s? No, this is new. This is new. Huh. just came out. It's funky. It came out week before last, maybe. Um, it's a mature audience. It's Ad House Books. So it's the same company that does, um, actually does uh, Captain Canuck. Pretty cool looking little book. All right. Yeah. Thought I'd give it a try. Very unique. We got By the Horns number seven. And, you know, if you're not reading By the Horns, you're missing one of the best fantasy titles on the stands today. I remember when you were talking about it, issue one. It's yeah. fantastic. I've, Beautiful. I've been hearing lots of good things about that. I'll have to pick up the trade. What's yeah, it about? Good. So the, it's in an alternate world. Uh, this woman um, is hunting monsters. What she really wants to do is hunt and, and uh, kill uh, unicorns, but they're very rare. So she kills any monster, oh, takes their heads. About this yeah, takes their heads into town and sells them. She can't get a lot for regular monsters anymore. Most of the unicorns are dead. Uh, and the reason she wants to hunt unicorns is because unicorns are the reason uh, or the cause of her love's death. Oh, what did they get stabbed by the horn? Actually, they got trampled, but you don't find that out. And it's not really their fault that they trampled them either. Like, you find that out later, but they don't care. You know, they, they still trampled yeah. them. You know, you know, they, well, uh, funny, like, I in... need to read it now. Thanks for that. Oh, no. It's, it's, there's a lot more to it. <laughs> in nature, most animals with horns are herbivores. Isn't it mm. funny how, like, in comics, it's always, like, monsters that have horns in it? Well, yeah. Like... I mean, because that's cool. Um, <laughs> what about, what about 
Blue flame number five. What was the question? What about what? What? Who asked uh, what? I thought, I thought mine said something. Never mind. No, oh. I, you said uh, all, all creatures with horns are herbivores. And I'm like, narwhals are herbivores. Uh, are narwhals herbivores? Like a whale with a... a That's a really good question. I don't know. Let me find out. <laughs> yeah, let me, let me know. I'm okay. <laughs> Here we got Cherry Blackbird. That just came out. <laughs> Beautiful. Ooh. Number four there. Inferno number two, look at that Peach Momoko cover. That's a nice one. Right? Yeah, that's... Listen, yeah. I, I love Peach's work, but there's, sometimes she does covers and they just don't hit with me. Yeah. But... It's, it's, it's a hit or miss. That's what yeah, she it's is. A hit or miss. You mean like the Venom cover out this week? I didn't even bother looking. I didn't bother looking. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would say Peach hits it about 60, 65% of the time, but she should only do covers. I didn't even bother picking up that that de demon days and nothing against it if you loved it great i didn't bother it because it's just too much um in my opinion uh but you know everybody's allowed to like what they like swamp dogs house of crows this is a black caravan book for those of you who don't know black caravan is a print <laughs> of scout uh, listen I'll, I'll tell you right now i have yet to pick up a black caravan book that i wasn't like oh this is fucking righteous you know like we don't kill spiders Oh, yeah, that's a oh, nice cover. Yeah, this, this one that came out this week, Tales from the Fantastical Crimes Unit. Oh, cool. You got all of the Black Caravan books. <laughs> I, I just, I buy them. If I supply, it says Black Caravan, I get it. This came out last week, The Heathens. Colin Bunn. New I book. Think I got that. Who's uh, Colin Bunn? Do you Colin know him? Bunn. Colin Bunn is this little known writer. Um, that in case for all of you who are watching the show, if you if you watch this show and don't watch the IFLC show, you're you're doing yourself a disservice. They're they're way more professional. They actually like know how to talk to people and stuff. Um, <laughs> don't oversell us. Come on. <laughs> they they ask questions and wait for answers. You want to set realistic expectations. <laughs> uh, they're a great show. But they uh, uh, Rhea and I just interviewed Cullen Bunn. Uh, for IFLC, it was great. no fucking way. Yes, yes. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah he right says before hi. we came here. Yes. <laughs> yes. Wow. Um, I'm not jealous. Uh, so cool. Cool. <laughs> Even Ava uh, Webb says IFLC is amazing. Right. And, and <laughs> as e as as Ava is our most talented friend in the entire it's ecosphere. True. Accurate. Closely followed up by Lee. Uh, that's a that that's a. Sense. That's an that's an incredible endorsement right there. Thank you. Uh, time before that's time. That, <laughs> time before time. Number two. Uh, <laughs> I, I've been loving this story. It's a, the art's a little funky. Um, ooh, Providence, Providence of Secrets. Secrets. Thank you, Comic Zombie. I will look for that. Mm -hmm. um, now I had this on my poll um, before all this came out, I think it's, I think it's successfully off. Cause I don't know if these creators own this creation anymore. The S factor number two from action lab. Um, I'd love to talk to them to find out if they do. Um, but I, I think it's off now. That was really cool. It does. Uh, it's, you know what the concept is? Huh? Rhea is really cute. I will agree with you on that, Ava. She is really super cute. That's um, an interesting concept. <laughs> Uh, so the concept behind <laughs> S Factor is, yeah, if I can make a book about how cute Rhea is, I would. Um, the S Factor is a concept, <laughs> uh, is uh, a dating show with for superheroes. Wait, what? It's That's a dating cool. show. It's a dating show for superheroes. This guy is actually like a sidekick, and he gets on a fight with the main hero, and they're kind of like, oh, we saw you were fighting. How about this? Why don't you come on and do this game show? It's it's a funny little story. So there's that like seven. Amazing. I want yeah. that. Drama. That sounds great. <laughs> yeah, there's like ten different uh, female superheroines who are are fighting for a chance to date him. It's it's fun. Uh, from AWA, uh, Knighted number one. This is in the um, what is that universe? Um, Resistance. Resistance universe. That's oh, right. Oh, really? No way. I haven't read Resistance, but that issue uh, looks pretty good. I picked it up. I haven't read it yet, but it's, it's a superhero good. that's killed. And uh, oops, now I got to yep. fill his shoes. I'm surprised my shop didn't add it to my pool. It's know pretty I'm, good. I'm, I'm pretty good. Pretty good. The Me You Love in the Dark, number four. I need to get that too. This is my bad, number one, the Jerry Ordway cover. This came out last week. Um, 
and uh, I think my shop only had the the eight. My name is Lady Gaga, and I love milk. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, here we have uh, Chilling Adventures in Sorcery number one. That's that Frank Avia cover. How do you beat that? Came out today. Lady. Harley Quinn, the Lady. animated series. Oh, for. Look at that cover. That's beautiful. Oh, that is okay. Oh. Hey, now listen, all I'm saying is Harley has green thumb goddess. I have a feeling all of her fingers are green. Ah. Hey, oh. Oh. Um, but on that note, I do love the fact that she's wearing some fishnets. I, I, uh, this is great. They look so cute together. They look like, so what? happy. I love them. And and here's the thing. I think, you know, I think Harley is very damaged to the point where any type of relationship she's in may not be the healthiest. But her and Pam's relationship is the healthiest I've ever seen for her. It is, and that's great. It's great. Um, it kind of starts as like trauma bonding and then it gets yes. healthier as it goes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, here we have first issue of Sheena, Queen of the Jungle. This is that Arthur Sudam cover. Um, I don't know what other, other cover he stole this from, but uh, that's that Arthur Sudam cover. Uh, Marjorie Finnegan, Temporal Criminal, number six. Look at that cover. Huh? That's fucking crazy. Walking Dead 26. This is the deluxe edition. Mom number three, silver coin number six. This came out last week as well. Magic order number one. And here's the last of my new books. Although I got a couple back issues. Wait, Magic of Order. Yeah, Magic Order number two. This is the second volume. Just came out. Stop lying, bro. Just yeah, I, I picked that up for Rufo. I haven't read even the first oh, volume. It's boy. out. I yeah. read the first volume and I loved it. Right. How about what that Robinson Caruso punishment, huh? Yeah, I got it. Insane. I got it. So this is Guillaume March. This is the guy that did um um what's the book? Uh Batman. Yeah, he did Batman and the Joker, but he did he just did that <laughs> one uh oh fuck. It has Carmen. Oh yeah, he just did Car. He, Carmen just came out. He's been doing comics. I, I think he's Italian. I love Carmen. I love Carmen. Uh, love it. Love it. Great story. Great book. Yeah. Um, beautiful Gosh, art. Fine. Beautiful art. Yeah. Uh, here's the back issues, guys. John Carpenter's Tales of Science Fiction: Surviving Nuclear Attack Number One. I love the John Carpenter runs. They're so fun. Mm -hmm. Money shot. There's that Oma Va a Vault vintage cover. That's a great cover. Cute. Slowly but surely finishing those off. Here's Cherry's Jubilee number four. Uh, these are real tough to come by. Uh, the original Cherry books had like eight, nine, ten printings in some instances. The Jubilee books, not so much. A lot fewer printings. This is the second series. Um, Cherry's Jubilee, she did, they did Cherry Deluxe, which is a single issue. Um but the Cherry's Jubilee, there's only four issues. The third issue is the best one. All the all the female characters dressed up like superheroes. Really great on the cover. This is Eagle number six. Anybody familiar with this book? No. Nope. Oh. I, oh, I, I never feel like what I is should. It? You should be. The you want to make any guesses? Any guesses there, Mr. Worst? My brain's a little shot after this week. First professionally published work of Adam fucking Hughes. Oh, wow. Oh, hell yeah. There you oh, go, that's Hughes. Amazing. 87. Nice. That's his first Beautiful. published work. I'm a huge fan of Adam Hughes. I got this book for 250 I think I've heard you say that once before. Big fan. Big fan yeah, of Adam like, Hughes. Like once a week or something? Basically once a week, essentially, <laughs> more or less. More or less. Last but not least, I got a nice little pile here. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you the Savage Dragons first. I got oh. some cool Savage Dragons. Check this out. Let's do Issue it. 128. This year, way to go, Lady Fantastic. This year is the Wanted crossover. Wanted. Oh no. Nice. Now, if you've never read Wanted, if you've only seen the Angelina Jolie movie, let me tell you something. You are missing. What at they the time? bullets in the comic book? No, it's nothing to do with that shit. I do not care then. Nothing to do with that shit. You know what they do with it? It's actually a story about what if all the supervillains of the world got together and defeated the superheroes. 
in the mid 80s. Really? And made everybody forget the superheroes were real and secretly ran the world. That's exactly like the movie. Uh, right? Then you got oh, one or Savage movie. Dragon 130. Now, I was trying for issue one. I forget what it is. I want to say it's 120 or 121. It's got this great cover with all these public domain superheroes on it. This is one of them. Uh, it's a few issues before the 128, uh, but I did not win that one in the auction. That one went for a few bucks. Um, but uh, this one's great. It's like all this fight with this. This guy was published by, I want to say it was uh, Holyoke Publishing, this superhero. Uh, and, and Eric Lawson brought him back just to fight Savage Dragon. Savage Dragon 149, that's Dart. Dart is a character that has been around in Savage Dragon since like issue three, four, or something like that. Um, she was originally hired to be to join the the freak force, the superhero police force. Uh, eventually, becomes a bad guy here as or a bad lady, as you can see, and fights Savage Dragon. Her foot it, looks like a spade. It does indeed look like a spade. Savage Dragon number one fifty one. This is Mako. <laughs> He's basically like a king shark. Um, I love that cover. I love this cover. <laughs> if you don't read Savage Dragon. I you want are, to, but there's just nowhere to start. It, I want to start at the beginning. But... It's very tough. Mm -hmm. He hasn't printed trade paperbacks in years. Um, and some of the issues have a print run of under like 2,800. <laughs> real low. Can real, I real low. Omnibus, please. Yeah, right? Yeah, right. Last but not least, a book that almost helps. Uh, I think I'm probably like 20 issues away. From oh, Volume oh. 1, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Damn. Number 32. Wow. You know, I just yeah. saw a first print Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and a 6.5 went for $12,000 today. Holy moly. Mm. It was listed Miracle on Man, cover price. That's a good Miracle price. Man says that he had like five copies of that and he's going to give me one. I do not have any copies. Uh, true story, <laughs> the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one. There are more known counterfeits oh, really? than there were first printings of the first issue. No. So the first issue, I think, like, had a print run of like 300. Uh, mm. I, uh, 500, maybe? I think Very it was low. closer to about 2,000, but I don't mm. quote me on it. I don't think the first, the first printing is like that. I think the second printing is, and then I think the third printing is something like 30,000. Yeah. Um, do you have uh, two copies of that? What? No, 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 no. This is me. Chris oh. says 3K. Uh, 3K. Thank you. Okay. I'll believe that, Chris. Um, uh, that does sound right now that you say that. Um, I apologize, Rob. Uh, but, um, there are more known counterfeits. Uh, that was something they used to print in the old Overstreet price guide. Uh, back in the in the late '90s, early 2000s, they would print. That was something they would include on almost every copy of the price. That's it. That's all the books I had. Uh, but that's something they would include in every one of those price books, and they would talk about how, oh man, it's it's you know it's crazy how many how many uh, uh, counterfeits there are of that book. Uh, there are a lot. Um, there are some very special ways to find the counterfeits and the real ones, uh, and there's some tough ways to figure out you know what printing you have because essentially one, two, and three, those printings are almost identical. Very that sounds like another deep dive video you can do right there. there it just go. might be. It just do might it. be. Yeah, just deep dive. As just, soon as I get my editing machine in. And just so everybody knows, I'm Jeez. currently doing a, a poll on Jeez, the Twitter. Uh, she has terrible timing. Sorry about that. <laughs> I am currently doing a poll on Twitter asking everybody what they would like my first deep dive video to be. And the four options are for super obscure superheroes, Gold Key slash Western Publishing, Archie Comics, Charlton Action, or Dell. So head on over to at Komodo1977. Yeah. Vote. It's my pinned tweet. I just uh, dropped it, was... it in, the, in the chat. It's in the chat. Uh, Thank, you. Thank you very much. Nice. And if everyone could vote for Archie, that'd be no. great. I, I voted, I voted Dell for is probably what you the most of. What did you <laughs> vote for, Wack? Uh, Charlton action. Charlton. So Charlton is winning at thirty six percent. Shockingly, Gold Key is at thirty percent. I didn't think it'd be that close. I thought Charlton would blow everything away. Dang. So head on over there, everybody. Give me a vote. Retweet it if you got a Twitter account, so uh, we can get a nice wide selection. We'll be doing that video here sometime soon, and be putting it up on the Not Near Mint channel for you to watch at your leisure. 
very soon. Just can't wait to get that damn computer in. <laughs> <laughs> so who else has got some comics? Comics on the mind, whack. Three, I, you're I got good. some stuff. I can show. Let's see what you got. Let me throw up the bumper. I got Batman. If anyone wants to talk about Batman. Hello, do you like comic books? Mm. But I just wanted to show you my comic book collection. This is some of my... Uh, can I eat your ass? Hey? Can I eat your ass? Like, can I put my tongue in your butthole? If you subscribe to Wack Comics, you can. On YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> you gotta let that dude eat your asshole. So I'm telling you. <laughs> I, love love it. I um, I like to have my asshole licked. So whenever he's down, I'm down. Right on. I'm, I understand it. Trust me. Yeah. Okay. Um, that too. <laughs> so I went to Supernova on the weekend. Um, How was it? Did you have fun? It was good. It was a good time. I met um. What was his name again? Uh, Sean. Um, Sean Sunday, I think it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did you and see I, comic? Yeah. This, because I got this, I backed this from, um, you had uh, yeah. the writer on. Yeah. Um, and That's so I, I saw that he was going to be there, one of the artists, and I was like, oh, I'll bring that. And it's so I met him and he uh, signed it on the inside there for me. Nice. And, uh, had a little chat with me. It was a pretty cool dude. But um, what else did I get? I got. Well, uh, hey, hey, wait. So, uh, Sean wound up tweeting at me earlier this week that hey, some guy out of the middle of nowhere apparently watches your show and <laughs> came up to me and said, "Hey, I saw you on this internet show," and I went like, "Yeah, it's whack." So... <laughs> <laughs> it was me. Um. I also, uh, there was another uh, creator there um, for this comic book called Maurice in the Metal. I've got issue one and two. Issue three is coming out early next year, and we're going to get him on White Comics to have a chat about it. And um, I told him we'll try, I'd try to get him on to a few different channels, so hopefully we can get him on here as well, because this is a really fucking fun read. Like, if you enjoyed like Murder Falcon, I, I'm sure you will love this. It's about this, uh, this kid here who plays the drums, and um, he gets powered by heavy metal and like it gives him like super strength and stuff like that. But um, when he listens to like pop music or anything else like that, it's his kryptonite and it makes him weaker. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's Jonas Dance. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> and it came, came with some stickers and some posters as well. Oh, that's cool. That's but, um, so cool. Yeah, really, really recommend this. And I, I honestly cannot wait to get the. The writer on to to chat about it some more because he was a really cool guy uh, chatting to him at Supernova. Sick. And then um, was it busy by the way? Was it filled with people? Was everyone wearing masks? Everyone was wearing masks. Um, it was was not busy. It, I've been to a lot of Supernovas. I've been going to Comic Con since like two thousand. Yeah, I think two thousand eleven yeah. was my first one. Nice. Um, so this was definitely like the smallest one that I've been to, like ever. Wow. Yeah. I should have um, <laughs> destroy, destroy all monsters. Mm. I got the hardcover for this. Um, I've, oh, I fucking I yeah. I love everything uh, Brie Same. Baker and Philip Stars. And this Reckless Same. series has been amazing. I thought there was only going to be three of these books, but there's an ad in the back for a fourth one, and I was like, fuck yes, let's go. Um, but I was a little bit, a little bit disappointed with my. It was wasn't really my local comic book store's fault. They got given the wrong cards because like every um, volume has come with a, like a little signed sticker plate, and I was uh, really sad that I, they they got given the wrong ones. They got given this, and I was like, that's that's not Brew Baker and Sean Phillips. <laughs> Who is it? It's Scott Snyder and. Uh, Tony S. Daniel, this was supposed to be for Nocterra. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm gonna I'm making that to uh Simple Simon down in, in Melbourne because he's like the biggest Nocterra fan. Uh so I'm gonna, I'm chucking that to him. And um I I heard uh Miracle, I know comics on the mind, Kirk. I'm sure I heard you talking about this one, right? 
Time Before Time. Oh hell yeah, I'm reading that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I was keen to to pick up the trade after hearing you talk about it, and it was fucking really good, really interesting. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, yeah. I, I I can't wait for more of this. The art was really good too, just like a nice little simple style and stuff like that. But great, the story is fucking everything. Um, yeah, just the. Uh, if you if you don't know, it's uh basically this time period in the future where everything's shit. No one wants to live in that time period anymore. So they like there's a mob sort of thing that can uh, take you to any time period you want to go to. So like to get you out of there, you know, and t- all of that time travel and stuff. And then there's these like two mobs that fight each other from like different uh, ones in the past and ones in the future. Like that that shit's like really really funny to me. Um. I got uh, Maniac of New York. This is the, a special edition. This is the DJ Lynx. Nice. Uh, I see variant. that. Variant. That's so cool. The DJ Lynx variant of Maniac of New York. Um, his DJ Lynx is the actual Maniac of New York. This was a, a good read. The I art was, it. yeah, the art was really fucking cool too. I love that sort of painted style, and it felt like a, a true horror comic. You know, like the sequel uh, is coming out towards the end of the year. I know I can't wait. Um, hopefully, it's as, as good as this because, like, the, the, the whole train, like, you're basically on a train for the almost the whole series. And yeah, it's just like the one really- thing I'm looking forward to seeing that they finally address, hopefully, uh, towards the end of the series, they say, Hey, underneath the subway system, we found these magic relics. And it looks like that might affect the maniac, but then they never address it again. Like, yeah. it's over. They, they, they didn't address it. Well, maybe in the sequel. <laughs> it's pissing down rain here. It's really loud. Can you hear it? No. Is no. it raining when you are, Ray? No. No? Otherwise, she'd be having a panic attack. <laughs> uh, I, I, don't you guys live like six blocks from each other? Like, what? We're like How 20 minutes that? away. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. It's weird. Yeah, I can't like remember if over you raining on you. <laughs> did I speak about crossover last time I came on here? I can't. Remember. I don't know, but you should talk all about I think it. You did a little Absolutely. bit, yeah. Crossover issue nine. This was a fucking really fun issue. Um, Great, How really. Did last two. Oh, uh, you got to get back on it. I reckon this was a. I don't want to spoil what happens at the end of this issue, but it was really fun. And there's, uh, if you're a Powers fan, they do it like a big Powers bit, you know. Uh, uh, okay, was... I did read that one. You did read that one? That yeah. one I did read because she's going, I'm not doing the powers bit. I'm not doing... Okay, fine. We're doing the powers bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Black Hammer Reborn. Oh, did I, have I spoken about these on here? It's been a while since I've been on here, so I can't remember. I saw a really good uh, trade of that, like a hardcover of uh, Black Hammer I wanted to get. So I've never read any of the Black Hammer series. Oh, it's so good. I fucking love everything Black Hammer. This... This series is um is really good too. I've been really loving this. This is this issue we uh, found out how um, the new Black Hammer um, Lucy uh, fell in love with her husband, which is this guy here, the supervillain. Uh, well, not really much of a supervillain. He's like a bit of a joke villain, but it's pretty pretty good issue. And then uh, Ice Cream Man. This was the. Has anyone read this issue of Ice Cream Man? You, you get Ice Cream Man, aren't you, Miracle Man? <laughs> is he gone? Did he leave me? He's taking me shit. He always, <laughs> he always leaves it on me. I know. <laughs> he doesn't care what I. He's like, Lee, I'm so happy you're here. I can't wait to walk away while you're talking about what you've read. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to. I really apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, uh, Jeremiah. I, I totally agree with you. That recap at uh, the recap of, of uh, at the beginning of issue eight was amazing. I laughed my ass off. That was that was every, every single page over what two pages, right? Yeah, yeah. Have you read this issue of Ice Cream Man yet, Miracle Man? That's what I was. I have. I was yeah, I really enjoyed this one because this one was uh, you open it and it's asked you to rotate your your book. To uh, ninety degrees, right? And then you can uh, you read it like this, and the, the whole time you're reading yeah. it, he's he's going down the tree, and it's 
it's really really fucking cool um tyler did a video on this um on white comics you can go and check it out it's really cool because one one really cool thing about this book if you take out all the pages you can actually line them all up and it's like so he did that and it's like it's really long fucking and you can see oh, all the tree cool. together yeah please post a link to that in the chat yeah, everybody see can that. see it i will post it and you all have got to go check that out at the end of the show all right Damn, yeah we'll do it and then um the last one that I've got, I haven't read yet, but I will soon. Is Moon Knight because I'm really so, digging this series. So, so good. I I hope we see lots of um, Tigra uh, through I got this Tigra series tonight. Uh, because you know the great thing about this, what we what we're seeing lately in in a lot of the books, Iron Man did it, Moon Knight has it now. We're getting some of these obscure like disco era superheroes and i'm i'm all about it i love it yeah uh, i'm gonna, gonna grab a link for this video and chuck it in the chat for everyone's viewing pleasure after the show and as he does that i told you i got some tigra today hell yeah tigra i have the issue that she begins in the marvel chillers but these were two that i was right. missing so now i'm just missing all the rest I feel Let's like I should do the cipher thing. El Tigre. El Tigre. <laughs> um, you know, Tigre, how do you say it? Tigre? Tigre? How do you say, say it? I say Which Tigre. One? I say Tigre. I'm too white to have an opinion. <laughs> it's okay. So are the creators, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, there we go. Wax, how to read Ice Cream Man number 26 in the chat right there. So do you have any more books, Lee? That's me. That was a good haul. I like that yeah. a lot. Good haul. I'll yeah. be going to the store on Friday, and I can't wait because uh, Robin and Batman came out by Jeff Lemire, and I fucking cannot wait. I pre yes. that bad boy. In. The, uh, the Jeff Lemire cover. Have you seen the Jeff Lemire cover? It's so I haven't. Oh, I wanna. It. I love I've me some Lumia. You know I love some Lumia. Let me pull it up and show my screen. Please do. Yeah. Who who is this Jeff Lemire you speak of? Oh, he's my um, favorite. He yeah. wrote this thing called Sweet Tooth, and um, Robert Downey so, Jr. was like, "I like that," and made it into a show. Yeah. I've only heard of his new book called Mouth Book. There is no other book he has done before that. Mm -mm. Says the person that's never read a comic. Uh, if you share my... those people on Twitter, and I've been seeing them a lot this week. In fact, you... hasn't done Kate's been uh, like, isn't he off Twitter now? He's going to be off Twitter, yeah. I think it's getting worse. Everyone's getting COVID edgy, and I think that's part of what happened at Astro World because they were saying it was really weird mm. vibes. Like everyone's in this weird space where they've been cooped up too long, and they're starting to lose their shit. Uh, you know what, uh, Donnie? Ooh. I saw something today. Oh, that's, all right, that's, that's oh my that's god! I that's fucking amazing. love it. Yeah. That's a dope ass cover. Uh, it looks like he used color this time. I didn't know. I, I didn't know that was something he knew how to do. Yeah, he, I, read Royal <laughs> City. He Royal does a City's lot of uh, color wash. Right. He does a lot of. He does a lot of subdued tones. That, that's just I beautiful. That it looks on really my great. Wall. Very oh, yeah, that's it's amazing. Great. It's a great piece. You should read Royal City if you have a uh, Miracle yeah. Man. That one. I read the first issue. I just, I, I have, I just really struggle with his work. Um, nothing against him. I'm glad people love him. I just, I just really struggle with it. You should, you should try because I struggle with you, but I'm still here. That's that is a bald face lie. You legitimately <laughs> love me. Um, I do. I do. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you. Anyway. <laughs> Eva says that Jeff Lemire is her daddy, and I'm with you there. Let's fair. Let's be siblings. Love that. Okay. All right. So who's up next? Who's on first? Who's on second? Who's on third? Do you have anybody else? I think we're comics on the mind. Yeah, I have other books today. Woo! I was just avoiding. Are we there on. yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? <laughs> Are we there, there yet? yet? We're there yeah. yet. I'd, I'd like you to think of something specific of your organization and that you will not object to having disclosed. 
Yes, I have something. Do I have to close my eyes? It doesn't matter. All right, yes, I have something. These are comic books, and they're soaked. Soaked. Look, man, this is all soaking wet. That makes them worth nothing. Shitola. They dry by self. I, you don't, I, I'm with you. I collect comic books. You don't dry them out. They, they're done. Comics on the mind. <laughs> You know, for Halloween, you should have had a change of clothes covered in blood or ketchup. No. Blood, whatever. <laughs> Just to go, it happened. It really happened. I told you. It would drive me insane. <laughs> All right. But here's my pick. I'm like two weeks behind. So a lot of the books you'll see are from last week, too. But this is from this week. So I saw, I read the, um, the promo for this and I was like, oh, this looks pretty good. So. I wanted to get that too. Now hold it up on the screen again. Oh yeah. yeah. Because when I went to go put this into CLZ today, this happened. What yeah. the hell is Crope? Then I realized, wait a second, they changed wait, what? the title last yep. minute. Oh, no. Wow. Oh. One of those? Like yeah. That? So that this I... was the original title of the comic and you yeah, can see it that here that inside. Is... It has a completely different name. Same Why? everything. Damn. So uh, I, I don't know. I can't say for sure, but I might think that uh, this has something to do with it. You want to yeah. switch to mine real quick, um, which is a totally different book. From, that comes with too, though. <laughs> uh, from 2016. No, 2017 looks like it was one it was first published. Um, and it's it's not by the world's greatest publisher, um, but you know um, you don't want your you don't want your comic title too too close. Uh, the Federal Bureau of Paranormal something or another. It was called Collider at first. It was a Vertigo mm. title. They oh. called it Collider. First issue came out, and second issue they changed it to FBP. I remember that. Yeah, because there was another book that well, was called Collider. Well, to be fair. Uh, right now, we have Chip Zdarsky putting out a book called Stillwater, and there's a movie out there by Matt Damon called Stillwater. Uh, so if a movie winds up getting made, what are you going to call it? A bunch of water. Still. Still still water. water. <laughs> uh, anyway. That's what you call it. I just, I just yes, finished volume one of that, and yeah, I loved right. it. Hey, Kirk, I know you, it's not what you're showing off, but it's right behind you, that thing cover. Like, well, what is that, dude? That is so fucking good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shout out to uh, Comic Zombie. He gets a okay this to me. Uh, I guess it's, like, it's from the Fantastic Four. I think it's 37. Yeah. Um, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, I fucking love did, that. Did you get the thing book that came out today? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I get the thing book that came out today. I and you get every cover of the thing book. I mean, that came what? Out today. I mean, I, I, <laughs> because I did get that thing. Nice. <laughs> you didn't just get that cover. I you just, got I the just, good cover. I got the, the, the sick ass book cover. It is oh, a good cover. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh no. That's the best part. Look at that. That motherfucker is gone. Well, Ace, Ace, turn away. Turn away. <laughs> Warning. Yeah. Warning. 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 Banger alert. Banger alert. Holy fucking shit. Look at that fucking book. Oh my fucking god. Look at that fucking book. Oh my fucking oh my god. god. Look at that book. Oh Jesus Christ. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I like turtles. I like turtles too. <laughs> you like squirrels, <laughs> and Lucas. Squirrels, yes, squirrels. My homie Lucas, uh, Ace, they know him very well. Um, he knows Black Phone Adventures. <laughs> um, I have not yeah, seen I have, a trailer for Black Friday. I haven't either. 
I didn't know it was a trailer. I don't even know what it is. I'm curious. Well, I, 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 there was a Black Friday comic uh, yeah. from like Source Point or, or one of those. Oh, we'll make it. more of the banger alerts, Ava, soon enough. As soon as I get that computer. Oh, yeah. We need a, we need a part three. Scout. I lie. It was from Scout Comics. Oh, there you <laughs> go. Still great. Still great. Uh, but here's uh, Strange Academy number 13. I just read uh, 12 earlier. I'm just catching up on. I'm talking about being behind on reads. I am very behind on reads. You know, yeah. I've heard that that name for that title is very odd because it's not strange and it's not an academy. Can you dispute or confirm that? I mean, it, the, it, Doctor Strange created the academy. Okay, all right. Reports <laughs> have been wrong. Reports have been wrong. And right after he died, they're like, "Well, uh, the guy that runs this school is I dead." Still didn't so read that. I, I think it. I'm, I'm probably going to be a little confused because I'm not reading The Death of Doctor Strange. I do have issue one, the Scotty Young, so I should I should uh, probably read that one. But All you need to know is he's dead and he's now back, but as a much younger version of himself as a protocol, if in case he dies. That's a mouthful. Uh, anyway... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's a lot to, to, to pick That's up there. Here's, here's Canto, weird. number three. Number three, you do? Uh, issue four of three of the third Canto series. I, love I still it. need to read the first one. It's good. You need to get the trade. It's so yeah, good, dude. Um, here is the Mighty Morphin. I'm very behind this series. I'm, I'm, like, I'm on issue number seven. I'm what, what is an Eltarian? I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you. I think that's um, Zordon's people. I think. What is yeah. Zordon? Zordon. Zordon. You know, the big watch, head. You never watched the original Power Rangers, so it's like I can't. If you okay, watched, fair enough. Fair first enough. season in America, the, the American Power Rangers. First season. Zordon is like the face of Bo in Doctor mm, Who. Mm, okay. But Zordon is more badass. <sighs> That's saying a lot. Mm. That's saying a lot. Yeah, it was great. Now I want to. I want to watch that too. I grew up. I, grew up, I ran home to watch the Power Rangers when I was a kid. I would never run. I tried. <laughs> I meandered home to watch things as a child. Uh. Anyway, here's uh, uh, Undiscovered Country number seventeen. I'm surprised. This is still, I'm really behind this series. It's been great, but I'm with you. Like it needs to wrap, man. I like, yeah. By I, twenty, by twenty, it better be over. Yeah. Yeah, I might have to like blah blah. <laughs> but here's aliens number kitty. Still in my <laughs> aliens number kitty. <laughs> I'm <ain't> tripping. <laughs> here's aliens number eight. These covers yes. are amazing. <laughs> and here's another Doom cover. I've been loving this series. A lot of y'all not reading it, but you should be. Savage Avengers. So good. I picked that up for some reason today, and I can't remember why. You got it because you just realized it just popped into your head. Oh, this is a fucking amazing story. <laughs> I, I didn't have to pick a thing. That's the only reason, I think. Uh, well, it's good. I love it. Um, and another series I love with a kitty in it. Is that a white comic sign behind your head, Kirk? No. Oh, well, I thought oh you would never notice. <laughs> what? Look <Yeah>. at that. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> That's not as cute as that kitty. Isn't she cute? I, I love her so much. I want to adopt a kitty so bad. But here's a comic book that I cannot wait to post on Valentine's Day. Here's Philadelphia. Oh yeah, Philadelphia. <laughs> oh, yeah, number eighteen. I love this color. Am like, you still alive? Really? The last issue I read, he was like, well, he wasn't dead. He was just like going to jail. Um, here's Batman one sixteen. Fear State is still going on. I'm still behind. I'm behind a I'm lot of DC. Right? Right? I know, right? <laughs> Is Batman the Adventure continues? This is issue number six. Nice cover. 
And I'm sure everybody saw that earlier. This is my last book. Crossover. Yeah. You're going to enjoy that, Kirk. Hey, look at this. Even Jeremiah is on Philadelphia and is loving it. Yeah, it's so good. It's so, it's so good. Jeremiah, Another is that... bestest. Was a good friend. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Tyler? Mr. Tootsie's in the house. <laughs> so, so uh, that's it. That's it. Uh, comics on the mind. Yeah, that's all I got. That's you didn't. You didn't, uh, you didn't order any like store exclusives for that thing cover or like anything like that. No, I don't. No, just that. Just that one cover I showed you. This one well, two. Right yeah, two. Yeah, regular okay. and that cover that everybody wants. There it is. Yeah, it's a great cover. And by the by the way, Eva, I know who the Power Rangers are. I was being snarky. Of course. <laughs> I have a break of the power to you. Didn't... <laughs> you are literally too stupid to insult. That is not true. You do it all the time. You do it all the time. You're like, the beauty of Miracle Man is that he's old and he's fat and he doesn't remember things. And man, I'm only two years younger than you are. It's not like I'm young. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. So, so I'm so in this thing called, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. All right. I just need to say, Miracle Man has the most beautiful butt. In the entire universe. So if that balances it out. <laughs> no, no, stop talking, go to jail. <laughs> you, you, if you saw it, you would know. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get pictures pic, after the end of this show. You are. Yeah. Send us a, a pic and I'll let you know. Okay, sounds good. All right, I guess it's my turn then. <laughs> Oh, yes. Lordy. Do it. Nobody exists on purpose. Nobody belongs anywhere. Everybody's going to die. Come watch TV. Wow. Hey, look, you guys. The sun's rising. So, hey, everybody. These are all the back issues today. The first taste is free. Yeah, first taste is free, but you're going to have to check all this out on Lady <laughs> Fantastic's channel on Friday night. No. Instead, <laughs> over here is all the books that came out today. Uh, not everything came out because, as some of us might have heard, Diamond was hacked. Uh, so for some hacked? reason, my comic shop, yeah, yeah they were hacked. So my comic shop did not get a copy of uh, Strange Academy 14. They didn't get a copy of a few things, even Miles Morales. So here we're going to show some of the things I did get. So we'll start with showed. I mean, um, my date with monsters, number one. We got this. Everybody's got this. Then I picked up the second print of Never Never, number one. Oh, I could just get it for the good girl alert. Uh, you haven't read it? I haven't read anything. All I got a chance to do was bag, board. That was it. Gotcha. So this was the cover of the week to me. This is NYX Lucillo Perillo cover, and it might be a little dicey, a little bit racy, but wow, look at the It's a good cover. Did. Yeah, it's a good cover. Love it. Also, yeah. isn't Lucio a man? Is it? I thought so. I thought Lucio I was the name of a man. He, she, what? They. They They are a fantastic artist, and that's all I need to know. What I didn't know is, I almost put this back initially. I thought that this was not the McFarlane cover. I mean, from a distance, does this look like McFarlane? No. no, no. Then you look at the face, and you go, hey, that's a Peter Parker from uh, Amazing Spider-Man face. Yeah, it's McFarlane. Never going to probably read it. It's John Leguizamo. Unless I hear good things, then maybe I'll read it. There's so much to read here. He's like, definitely like, a guy, by the way. Lucio Perillo, definitely a guy. Oh, there you go. There's someone knocking oh, at the back door. Speaking of, there you go. I mean, this is, I'm looking forward to this, but I'm yeah, yeah, looking forward to something else. I'm looking forward to, hey, not near daddy. What's that? Hey. 
Mr. Tootsie's in the house. Look at that. Daddy's here. <laughs> How you doing, Daddy? What's up? You're right. All I'm going to say is. Cover. Whoa. Tyler made that when we had you guys on, and now it's slapped. No That's incredible. Yeah, do you remember that? That was it. That was the die cut whack hat. Yeah. Yeah, that was the die cut cover. Is that a 9.9? .9? It better be. It got a it got a point five. It says that when I cut it, it affected the story. I think that's bullshit though, because it's part of my art. Right? I think it's beautiful. I think it's beautiful. I just so you know. My penis or just the the book? Yeah. Wouldn't be the first time I said that, but uh, I was talking about the book this time. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I keep coming up? <laughs> <laughs> it's a special feature on your show. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Finishing out the indies, here's your A Righteous Thirst of Vengeance issue number two that. from Remeter. Yeah. And uh, this is the one I'm looking forward to reading the most of all of these indies. Stillwater 11, where the kids are now in control. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're that, not kids. They're all like our age. You know, that fellow looks so very good. unhappy that his face is being stomped by that uh, 10 year old's kid. It's over. Well, it's one thing if it was only one kid, but we kind of know at this point it's just this one dude against like a whole town you know of kids. Uh, and the children it's one thing if you go, hey, a little kid's trying to pick on me. It's another thing when there's 30 of them. Fair enough. But Fair I mean, enough. It's, I've it's, only beat the shit out of like 15 10 year olds at once. I've never done 30. So come but, on. Uh, You've never done what they did, and it's always sunny in Philadelphia it. and go. You know what? Enough of this. And then kick a bunch of six-year-olds' asses. Hey, wait a minute. They were like 10-year-olds, and they stole their bikes. So I get it. My That's shark accurate. did not get that book. There's that I one. Need, I need that's, to add that to my pool. So right. here's a funny thing. They tried doing the 14-inch uh, yeah. vinyl pressing yeah. release that was like $14.99. But the problem is, from a music record perspective, Trying to put out a printed comic is one thing because you can get a pretty quick turnaround. If you're trying to do something on a record, sometimes the turnaround is like two years. Yeah. And I don't care if you're even Marvel Comics, they're going to go, yeah, we can't bump this up any sooner. So if you're able to get this, uh, good luck. Right. And uh, hold on to it because it's not going to be cheap, I'm sure. Yeah, I really are, wanted to get the record one. Though. They are going to do a second print with the album. Oh, yeah, cool. That, That'll probably come out next year. Yeah, it'll take a bit. It'll take a bit. All right, so here is uh, Tim Seeley working on Superman versus Lobo. I'm looking Gorgeous. forward to reading oh, this. Black Island label? One shot. What? Hmm? It's Black Label? I don't have to read yeah. it. Yeah, it's, it's, it. it's been a while since the first issue came out. It's been a couple of months. <laughs> Damn. All right, and these are the issues that I'm really, really looking forward to reading because I was a huge fan, still am, of The Authority. Warren Ellis, I know he's not beloved now, but hey, Mark Millar did a stellar run, and they've been trying to integrate The Authority in some capacity through Wild, either Wildstorm with new stories, but most recently, they've been trying to put him in Superman. Now, you might not have the full gamut of the authority. You don't have Jack Hawksmore. You don't have uh, the the doctor or the engineer. But you have the freaking Apollo and Midnighter. And the one-shot special that came out just the other week just has a great back and forth between uh, Batman and Midnighter, where Midnighter, you can totally see that he has a hero worship of Batman, but he's trying to one-up him until Batman's like, this is just not how you do shit. But at the very end of the story, it shows, and you know, no spoilers, but we kind of knew what was going to happen, Batman approves of Superman's team. And here's the B cover. Love this B cover. Kind of reminds Gorgeous. me... If only they would have incorporated a more recent Superman in it, it would have reminded me of that Adam Hughes cover that he did for uh, Wonder Woman about what, two decades ago, which I don't have. One day, one day. Here is Batman Urban Legends number nine. So of, there is uh, a tie ins to a bunch of other stories. There is a Frank Avia cover for that book that is. I'm looking for that. Gorgeous. They didn't. 
Mm, yeah, it is. It's a Batwoman cover um, where it's wordplay at the bottom. I'm going to be looking for it uh, when I go hunting next time. Yeah. I know people aren't really into Rose Bash. I like Rose Bash. It's exaggerated. It's cheesecake. It's heavy lines. It's comic art that I enjoy. And it's not like stuff that we always see. Some people have even tried comparing her to Rob Liefeld. I am not one of those people. This is I didn't know people didn't like Rose Bash. I thought everyone liked if If you go to CBSI for their top 10 lists and uh, comic book and best, you'll see the, the person that does the write-ups. Anytime that Rose Besh appears in their write-ups, it's always trash and Rose Besh. Uh, I've been noticing this on a lot of people that are the more well-known, well-respected speckers, but that's kind of all they are. They're speckers. Uh, it's really, do you like Rose Bush or you don't? If you don't, you don't buy the covers. If you do, there are certain ones that are cheaper like this and certain ones that are just ungodly expensive. Now, this is a series that I oh, that's really cool been having. I've been having trouble getting into this series. Uh, it's it's John Ridley. He's an Oscar winner, Seven Years a Slave, but his I've been having difficulty getting into the Batman, and I have been saying I need to drop some of these Batmans or Batman adjacent titles. Like when Tinian finishes Joker, I will I will be off that. Um, here is was Justice that a prequel Batman. to Twelve Years a Slave? What did I say? Seven, Seven years. Batman. Yeah. I'm just it's just like half the story. <laughs> 20 years. 50, I don't know. I'm making up numbers. <laughs> Did y'all know that earlier this week, I went to go drive to Key West. I had my tire blow at 4.30 in the morning. Signed up for AAA. They came out seven hours later. And I've been playing catch up with oh. sleep ever since. But it's okay because today's new comic book Wednesday and Last Ride oh, by so Chip Zdarsky came out. And so I've been pretty. enjoying this a lot more than the regular Justice League series. Uh, I've been saying I'm trying to drop all these Batman Jason titles, but this cover just looked way too beautiful. And it's Dustin Nugent. It was hey, so uh, good. I really like <laughs> Jeff I, mean, I don't know if I've said it before. Yeah. My favorite. Mm, well, I usually get the B covers, but apparently they didn't get any today. So I at least pick up the A cover and I'll just dig and look around for the B cover eventually. Not a super duper high priority. Now here are the Marvels. There's so few Marvels because we didn't get everything. Didn't get my Marvels, didn't get my Art Adams uh, variant for Strange Academy, but I did get this badass variant for Alien number eight. Uh, that's pretty dope. Yeah. That's pretty dope. Wow. That's scary. Just a little. Just a little. Here is Amazing Spider-Man number 78. And this will tie into what's going on in Miles Morales. Because in Miles Morales, what I am aware of today is because of the fact that Ben O'Reilly's running around working for the Beyond Corporation, the Spider-Man name is now a trademark name. Miles Morales can no longer go around and call himself Spider-Man. No. Let's see how that plays out. I bet that Miles Morales will be coming out in a new issue number one with a new name. You heard it here first. It's the Spider Dude. It's the Spider Dude. He <laughs> <laughs> has the weirdest looking new costume. I'm not on board with it. Yo, 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 it's the Spider Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Shit is I don't right. think that's that bad. I kind of want it now. <laughs> ah, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Turn on seven, new story arc. Here's your... Savage Avengers number 26. Is the battle of life in that Eternals run? Am I the only one? I'm not I'm not digging it, to be honest. Mm. I like the up. I still need to see the new movie. I, I'm not going to criticize okay. it before I've seen it. Just like Venom, I haven't read it yet. Looking forward. I haven't seen it yet either. And the last one, Hellions, because they're wrapping up a bunch of these X titles because apparently they heard all of us when we started oh, listening and complaining. There's too many of these. Yeah. You know, I, here's one the thing, last though. thing, though. Here's the what? thing, real quick, about those X Men titles. I agree, there are way too many titles. I have no doubt about it. I completely support them having flooded the marketplace with them for one reason and one reason only. They didn't know what was going to hit. 
Mutants have not, well, yes, but they didn't know what was going to hit. Mutant stuff has not been out for a while. And let's be honest, every mutant title was a very different type of title. So I, I actually really support the idea. They were smart. They ran them until sales showed, hey, this isn't the title that's taken off, and they're going to stick with the ones that, that people love. And I think that was the right choice to make. Ooh, I didn't get that. I just pre-ordered the hardcover for x so The hardcovers are starting to come out, so I'm, I'm excited. Hey, X-Force was hey. good. I liked X-Force. Yeah. Now, there were two other books that I picked up over the weekend that I don't think I got a chance to show on Lady Fantastic Show. Would you like to take a look? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, you're now wall books. Oh. oh. It's no. a wally boy. What is it? And we get to see your bum too. He's gonna pull oh, a book down and like that whole shelf coming down. Lee, we just got nice. Lee, we, yeah. Nobody needs to see that. I did. Yeah. Lee, we just so, got that storm. By the way. You got Both it? of them yeah. are pretty big books. And by that I mean that they're big books and they're big books. The first appearance of White Tiger signed yeah. by George <laughs> Perez. Oh Hell yeah. It might that only be like a 6.5 so cool. or so. The spine yep. has a couple ticks, bindery tears, but otherwise it is a sharp copy. I picked this up uh, from Phil's comic shop. Uh, you all know him as uh, Take the Time Collectibles over on Instagram. Great place to get comics. Open you up, bro. But there's one other thing that I picked up, and this is mutant adjacent. Sorry if I'm loving on the mutants now because I just kind of knocked them down about half a minute ago. But there's <laughs> one character that I know y'all love, but good luck finding her first appearance because it occurs in a British comic book. And if you find it, you're going to pay an ungodly amount of money for it. I paid an ungodly amount of money for it. Beautiful. Oh, appearance of <laughs> Betsy Braddock. She later goes on to become Psylocke and later becomes uh, Captain Britain in an issue that's almost like $300. But damn, this is a sharp copy, almost like a 9-0 at least. Uh, it's just on this corner right here when I originally bought it. That little tiny piece was folded back. I just took a little uh, tooth, not toothpick, but one of my little tools here to bring it on back so that way I don't wind up using my fingernail and just tear it off. Kind of like what happened to this Superman 7 back here a few weeks ago. I saw that. Don't ruin that. But yeah. this, I am so glad you get this. This was my big pickup. I'm not doing a banger alert. We still have Ace on the show. But uh, I don't know. Is there anything coming up on the interwebs with anybody from the Not Near Mint crew? Yes. December 5th, Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous comes back. Y'all should watch it. It's a dope show. Watch it together. Do you have a Sandman come up tomorrow, or is that on hiatus uh, until later in uh, the month or next month? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm too oh, sick all the time. <laughs> Comics on the Mind, you have a show tomorrow night on your channel or over on uh, Gorilla Tag? I am not sure. To be uh, to be announced. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Re, anything going on over on your channel? Yeah, well, I went to the Dune movie premiere in Brisbane last night. Is your name Re? Re, I think you said Lee. They're uh, so close. <laughs> yeah. My bad. What did you say? Which one was it? I'm just gonna say for now, Lee. Go back it was definitely you. Re. My bad. I thought <laughs> it was Lee. That really. No, close. tell us about Dune. Tell us about Dune. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I went to the Dune movie premiere last night and got to speak to a bunch of uh, random people <gasps> and about the movie, and we asked them some uh, interesting questions, like if they have a worm fetish. So they that, do. That, <laughs> um, that video will be coming out to, tomorrow. And uh, yes, there's that ice cream man video that I was talking about. If you want to go watch that and learn how to read ice cream man properly, Tyler did that. It's a good yes, thing. you can, you can go do that. Such a good issue, too. Oh, well. Dad, That's... anything else going on the channel over there? Um, mm -hmm. I'm not re either, but I'm on Wack Comics, <laughs> and sure? we have stuff coming out every day, unless we don't. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, anyone that hasn't subscribed to WAC, you need to go do that. I'm going to use my, I'm gonna use my segment to promote another channel that's not mine. <laughs> Um, because it's really good. Every time I hop on, like I'll be probably mid work and I'll hop onto whack and it's the most chaotic, weird, crazy shit. And it resets my brain and it makes me feel so refreshed after I watch it. It's like medicine. You need to go get a dose of that. Um, IFLC, we just interviewed Miracle Man and I because the two boys were busy with their actual military jobs. We interviewed um, Cullen Bunn, and that's going to be up okay. hopefully within the next couple of weeks. He's been on the show. This is his third time. He is such a nice dude. I'm going to try and get him on this channel because you all deserve to hang out with him because he's great. And uh, what else have we got? Valiant Club, Sandman Club, Lives Every Week. Just go to iflcomics.com and check out all our sister channels that are promoted along the bottom, including Not Nimit. God damn, Ree, you just kicked ass. You came to kick ass and chew some freaking bubble gum. And I'm all I have gum. come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you got it too, Bermejo. Double Daddy, Bermejo. It's clean, brother. <laughs> so good. First, first thing book I've ever owned. Now I can whack my comics and my thing thing. <laughs> I, I have a, I have a shrine for my thing, so. <laughs> so. Okay. <laughs> so anything going on on the interwebs? on your end miracle man i mean you know pretty much every single day i'm uh dunking on chuds and uh uh mocking um uh cultural war tourists uh that's my my favorite thing uh it does occasionally grind my i do occasionally grind my gears on somebody's face wait mm -hmm. that wasn't right um oh, and uh <laughs> and uh, uh you know we post comics we talk comics we have fun Creators are, are very, very involved. Uh, so if you like comics, which if you're watching the show, I figure you do, come over and um, and uh, uh, check me out. Um, but as everybody else has said, be sure to, to sub up our boys over there at WAC Comics. Uh, they're fantastic. Uh, make sure you sub up IFLC. They're really great. They, they're very, very professional. I feel, I feel so dumb. Um, uh, every time I watch their videos, I'm like, God, I'm such a fucking scrub. I'm such a scrub. And then, uh, you know, last but not least, and probably... How do you feel when you watch our videos? I feel... I feel like I am not creative enough. He's a pedantic, <laughs> pontificating, pretentious bastard. A belligerent old fart. A worthless, steaming pile of cow dung. And last but not least, be sure to check out my whole girl... <laughs> Eva Webb over at the Panel Garden. Uh, she, I'm telling you right now, everybody, Eva Webb is going somewhere uh, with uh, her interviews. She's sharp. She's polished. She's uh, incredible. I cannot say enough things about her. Um, every creator you've ever wanted to talk to ever that is willing to talk to somebody on the internet has been there on her show. And are you ripping up the thing? No, no, I wouldn't oh, do okay. that. <laughs> that's what i feel like every time what? i watch one of wax videos um <laughs> you should definitely sub her up as well yeah eva's the best eva's so great mm. love you miracle man love you too uh, love yous love yous were you just ripping up a miracle man comic what are you ripping up over there not near daddy i just always have comics next to me that need wax so it's like you just never know I got this Dr. Manhattan book. I just don't really want this cover on it. Don't so do read it. Ah, ah, that's an you know what you look like to me with your good bag and your cheap shoes? You look like a rogue. But it's wow. way easier to read now with the cover gone. You, you just think? said how much you love Adam Hughes, didn't you? I do enjoy the Adam Hughes. Maybe as much as you like Jeff Lemire. <laughs> and it's definitely Lemire, not Lemire. Let me okay. Look at this uh, awesome arrow. I guess there's just two kinds of people, Miss Sandstone. My kind of people and assholes. It's rather obvious which category you fit into. Have a nice day. See this cool wow. arrow ad? That's a great arrow ad. Oh, yeah, don't tear that up. <laughs> yeah, I would never tear that up. I'm keeping that. It's a poster. 
Yeah. Still haven't watched it, Chad. All right, that has been a new episode of Not Near Mint. And if you're at home watching this, go and have some berries. But if, it's, uh, if you're watching this on the replay and it's 20 years later, we apologize. It's not new, but if you're watching it for the first time, it's new to you. Otherwise, we do have the comic shop that I go to every single week. His name is John Freshly. The name of his Instagram page is Miami Fresh Comics, and he does a claim sale every week, usually around 7.30, 8.30. Check him out, and uh, he gets some really good deals, and it'll ship out pretty quickly. Otherwise, uh, we're going to be having our last two episodes of the year be some big, big episodes. It's going to be uh, some of our best pickups and our favorite storylines over the course of the year. Otherwise, next Wednesday, we'll be returning at our regular time for episode 118. Our special guests are going to be Clay McCormick and Tyler T uh Why can't I speak right tonight? Tyler Chin Tanner, who was on the uh, show just a few episodes ago. We're looking forward to that. But thank you all so much for tuning in. Subscribe, like, and... Uh, we will see you again next week. Thank you all for joining. <laughs> oh my God. Every time you do it, I swear I die a little inside. Good. Uh, rule oh, number one, everybody. His answer was die. good, this son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs>